Watch every single cutscene. You know what? Let's fucking do it now. Let's watch every single cutscene. Watch every single one and try and piece together the entire story. And I'll do like an explanation at the end of it. And then honestly, I might put this on YouTube if I explain it. It's like a, a piece together story. Like kind of like story explained. You know what I'm saying? But like sim some like simple explanations for some and then... I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm probably not going to interact with the chat, but this is something I want to do, so I'm doing it. Fuck it. Lol. Here we go. The story. Wait, hang on one sec. I'm going to do this like a YouTube video. <laughs> this is going to be so bad. What's up? Welcome to YouTube. <laughs> nah, hold on. Wait one sec. I'm going to do this. I'm just going to say the story explained, and we're going to watch it, and then whatever. Here we go. The story of Hitman TM 2016 explained individually by watching each of the cinematics step by step. Here we go. I just got word. Romania was a dead end. You're saying that he lied? Place is real enough. Deserted. But we found no trace that your man was ever there. Or anyone else for that matter. Someone erased his steps. Hmm. We'll keep digging, of course. But frankly, it's as if the Earth just spat him out. Are you still determined? Does it matter? I was told there'd be no second chances. Don't believe everything you hear, Miss Burnwood. My decision stands. Very well. I'll be watching. Hmm. I just realized I missed a load of cinematics already. Never mind. We're starting again. <laughs> you know what? That was, that was really interesting, though, because... Oh, you know what? I'll get to that. I'll get to it. I'll get to it. I'm starting again. Hold on. I missed, the, I missed out some of the early cinematics. I missed out some of the early cinematics. Hold on. What are you saying? Crack it a little for. Fuck you, bitch. You're boom. <sighs> okay, then. The entire Hitman story, interpreted by myself and what I derived from the cinematics, as well as 100% completing said game, uh, which is kind of irrelevant, but pat myself on my own back, I suppose. Um, anyway, regardless, I'm going to watch each of the individual cinematics and then explain what I think at the end of it and then basically conclude at the end what I believe story is and what maybe to come next season and uh yeah that's it because a lot of this a lot of the cinematics are slightly vague and unless you piece them together one by one it can get a bit confusing so i mean it's kind of like there's going to be a pure cinematic experience and watch it in kind of like a feature experience i don't know whatever here we go Are you sure about this? I am. There are no second chances, Miss Burnwood. Not here. I choose him. May I inquire why? A blank slate? Antisocial? Apathetic and unresponsive? No doubt the boy shows promise, but... Perhaps I see a possibility where others see limitation. Isn't that what a handler does, sir? We'll see. Anyone can kill Miss Burnwood. He still remembers nothing? If he does, he's not sharing. We will check up on his story. The hospital in Romania. In the meantime, keep him under close watch. So, without not knowing too much about like the whole Hitman background and whatnot, it's basically just you know, Hitman's being brought in to work for ICA, and he's obviously there being examined by like you know a mental therapist or something like that. Um, and there's not much to it, you know. Just talk about a hotel in Romania, checking up on his backstory. I guess they don't know. I, I guess the ICA doesn't know where he's come from, but Diana knows him in some respects, so maybe they walked, uh, what not walked, worked in the past together on something. But he said that he's come from a hotel in Romania, so maybe he woke up in a hotel in Romania and didn't really know what's going on. So something's clearly happened in the past. 
that's led to these circumstances where he's in now, basically being inducted into the ICA to work for them. But uh, not really too much to understand from there. But we'll, we'll go on to the next one. Here we go. How did you know? I told you he had talent. His stats are off the charts. Such skills and reflexes. They could only be the result of previous training. Power like that, with no moral restraint, he could be dangerous. I thought that was rather the point, sir. All agents have weak spots, Miss Burnwood. Pressure points to keep them in check. But this one... <sighs> Perhaps it would be better to just... Give me a chance, sir. Give him a chance. I will take full responsibility. Very well. It's your show. Hmm. Straightforward enough, that basically explains everything. He's ridiculously good after doing the prologue training missions, and they can't put the finger on why he's ridiculously good, because they don't know he's been super engineered Hitman killer machine. So Hitman's obviously come from somewhere, but they don't know where. But he's in this situation now, so like, hmm. You don't know. But like there was you could see there was kind of like a bit of a bit of doubt coming from the head of the ICA being like maybe we should just and then he cut himself off as if he was like he wasn't sure about him because there's a doubt surrounding AG forty seven, you know. Maybe maybe he thinks it'll be you know, as the story develops, maybe he thinks he'll be more of a liability than of a benefit, you know, something like that. Who knows? Who knows? You can definitely see that the seed of doubt is being placed there. And until you get to the later missions and the later cinematics, you don't really understand why that doubt is there in the first place. But now you kind of understand that he's doubtful for a very specific reason, which is to be revealed later on in the story. On to the next one. I just got word. Romania was a dead end. You're saying that he lied? Place is real enough. Deserted. But we found no trace that your man was ever there. Or anyone else, for that matter. Someone erased his steps. Hmm. We'll keep digging, of course. But frankly, it's as if the Earth just spat him out. Are you still determined? Does it matter? I was told there'd be no second chances. Don't believe everything you hear, Miss Burnwood. My decision stands. Very well. I'll be watching. Alright, so once again, towards the end there, slight bit of doubt, a lot of pressure, kind of like, in a professional sense, where the head of LCA is really, you know, really trying to put all the blame onto Diana, so maybe that's kind of like a scapegoat, maybe in season two or something like that, but obviously as well at the start there, talking about Romania again, obviously Hitman's come from Romania or something like that, and then the ICA... I've obviously tried to do some investigating as to what happened in Romania and if his story checks out and so on and so forth. But then they've said that basically there's no evidence that he's ever been there. No trace of anything like that. It's a dead end. And then they say that somebody's obviously cleaned up after him as if he's been there. Whoever or not he's been on a mission there. Once again, not knowing too much about the bastard. Maybe there's like some kind of missing piece there that I'm not putting together. But I'm just working with the, the subject matter that I've got. So... Who knows? So whatever. But the question is, who has cleaned up after Agent 47 in Romania after this incident has happened or whatever involving a hospital? Maybe maybe he woke up in a hospital and doesn't know. Or maybe, maybe he was on a mission in a hospital. Like, who knows? But basically, the evidence has been erased. So the question is posed, who I'm now going to refer to as Mr. X, is to, well, whether or not Mr. X, which is obviously Agent 47's friend that you get, well, sp spoilers, that you understand later on down the line that is his friend and they ran away from, like, the lab or whatever, where they were, you know, created or engineered, whatever, so on and so forth. I'll refer to him as Mr. X. That's just something I want to get off the back, like, off the top of the bat. But, uh, so whether or not Mr. X has cleaned up after him, because we obviously know, plot twist down the line, that Mr. X has been following him. And been tracing Agent 47's steps. 
after some kind of incident. So we don't know whether or not he cleaned it up or if the previous agency that engineered Hitman has cleaned it up or if it was like, you know, an assassination attempt that has gone wrong. Maybe it involved Mr. X or not. Like, there's, there's a lot of kind of variables in there that are not really disclosed. All we know is his story was that he was in Romania. They went to go and investigate it, and it was a dead end, and somebody had obviously cleaned up after the steps. Uh, well, after his, the steps that he's taken. You understand what I'm saying? Okay, cool. On to the next one. And I'm pretty sure, just on top of the bat, I'm pretty sure this doesn't really give you any information at all. Just from what I remember, it's basically just like a cinematic kind of cool badass cutscene. The chopper leaves at dawn. Basically, the official Sorry. induction of Hitman into the ICA after he's proven like the head of ICA wrong, and you can still see that doubt there. So what happens now? You go back into the world, disappear, stay on your own and on the move. When we need you, we will contact you. And so does. He played his hand. And he lost. He cannot touch us now. <laughs> Still, I can't believe we beat him at his own game. If you know your enemy. <laughs> Quite right. I should tell you, the trail went dead after Romania. Our team found no records of any kind. No name. Nothing. I think they called me 47. That's not a name. So make it one. All right. Agent... Forty-seven. Alright, cool kind of badass cutscene. I'm just going to talk over this. Obviously, Sodas is the head of ICA, which ties into the very last mission where you actually kill Sodas. So that's kind of like the loop being fulfilled. I've a, this, that's only just dawned on me that it's that that's the same dude. I thought it was a previous ICA kind of a, like CEO or like you know governing body head or something like that. You know whatever. That's only just dawned on me. So I'm glad that I did this, because I did not realize that you were killing sodas, the dude that inducts you in at the end has basically been making, well, we'll explain that later on, but whatever, that's kind of crazy. Point is, what also has just dawned on me, is that I believe Hitman was created in Romania, right? So when they're referring to the hospital, Mr. X talking right now, which is a bit odd, you know, maybe it's like a premonition of things to come, kind of like a dialogue of premonitions of Your things to come. Have changed but once again, this is all just kind of like hyping up the whole Hitman experience. With an amazing score, because this song is legit. Powerful men have fallen by your hand, but by the same token, others have risen. Does the ICA? Does your handler? I live in that world. I have seen the consequences. I have felt the cost. That's what defines me. Yeah, so there's your first look, look at Mr. X. That's obviously like the whole kind of pre-planning dialogue of kind of introducing a uh, an antagonist. And, you know, first glimpse of Mr. X. And it's basically setting up the whole Paris mission with the ticket and the plane arriving in Paris. Mr. X is already there looking at the Eiffel Tower, so on and so forth. But overall, that entire dialogue sequence from Mr. X is basically... You know, I mean, it's obviously not spoken directly to 47. It's kind of like, you know, an internal dialogue for, like, kind of breaking the fourth wall a little bit for us. Explaining kind of like the backstory of what's to come in the season ahead, so on and so forth. For season one, obviously. But, um, yeah, like, I don't really know if there's anything else left to, like, really explain about that. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Pretty straightforward enough, for, as far as that is concerned. It's really as as the missions go on that shit starts getting a little bit more confusing. What I would say is that straight away from that cutscene, you can kind of tell that there's 
There's missing pieces to the puzzle right now that Hitman doesn't know. Diana maybe or maybe does know, but as my, you, you learn later on that she technically doesn't. And um, the ICA is up to something, but it's still really unclear as well. And finally, as well, just going back a bit, the induction where it's like they're leaving the, uh, the facility, the helipad and so forth, talking about Romania again. Um, basically implying that Hitman was engineered in Romania. I think he was engineered in Romania, if I'm remembering the history of like the story and right and whatnot. Um, but yeah, basically just explaining it's a dead end. And then Hitman like says, I think... They called me 47. As if he doesn't know, as if he can't remember his name. So maybe there is some kind of amnesia going on right now or something like that. I'm not really sure. So we're going on to the first Paris mission cinematic or the end of the Paris mission cinematic. So that was basically the first like prologue and setting up the whole sequences. Now she's going to get a bit more interpretive and derived as to what's going on with the story. But we're going to go straight into it. So obviously this takes place after the showstopper mission. Just, just to clarify, like, I'm just, I mean, you probably already know this already. But whatever. But you understand what I'm saying? How was Moscow? Kamarov is gone. I set him up as a Langley spy. It's quite the scandal at the FSB. His death will not be investigated. Your turn. Very well. The secrets of the global elite. Five years of work. Everything we've collected. This thing makes WikiLeaks look like a gossip rag. The pen beats the sword, huh? I have found that whoever wields the sword decides who holds the pen. Smile, Victor. Your reputation is safe. Now run along. I'm sure you have pretty dresses to attend to. Victor. Good luck with the show. I have a feeling it's going to be the one you'll be remembered for. Okay, right, so let me try to make sure I get this all right. Victor Novikov there is obviously talking to Mr. X. He's giving a list of, I believe, ICA names as well as like other intelligence organizations around the world. I believe MI5 is involved. Um, but he's giving that to obviously Mr. X. Obviously in transaction for what Novikov has done in the past in relation to, I believe, the Kremlin and the FSB. Hence why Mr. X was saying that he's obviously taken care of killing Kamarov, who I believe was like the head of the FSB or some some kind of some kind of like agency, you know, secret intelligence agency involved inside Russia. Right. So obviously the auction that takes place in the showstopper relating towards the, you know, the leaked agents list, including ICA and MI5, CIA, whatever it may be. I'm pretty sure it's not disclosed. I believe, like, the entire mission is set up based around the fact that MI5 has hired you, or whatever, to take out Novikov and these people before the list gets out and stop the auction, basically. But, at the end, you obviously realise that it was all futile because the fact is, the list is already out there, so it doesn't matter. It was, like, a completely futile mission. And you, what you also realise is, uh, Mr. X already knows, in a sense, that something bad's going to happen at, like, the whole show and the auction's not going to go through. And maybe Hitman's going to show up. Maybe he doesn't know it's Hitman, but maybe there's some kind of, like, ruse in there that he sanctioned the hit and, like, basically did it as a ruse, saying that it was from MI5, but maybe it was him trying to clean up the loose ends. So... You obviously know there's some kind of, like, sinister intentions from Mr. X, but you don't know what, like, why he wants this ICA list. Maybe, like, well, you kind of understand a little bit later on that 
they're kind of like a, a freedom fighter militias being, uh, you know, compiled in the Colorado mission. So maybe that's what he's building it up for in terms of getting the list of all the names from the ICA and stuff like that. So obviously, basically, Mr. X is on a mission for revenge, hence why he wants this list. Mr. Novikov is a backstabbing son of a bitch because he's basically given this list or as a trade for Mr. X killing Kamarov in Russia earlier on, which is like the lead, like the head of like some kind of Russian intelligence agency or something like that. So this is basically what's being derived from that. So there's still kind of like a lot of unanswered questions, but straightforward enough. He's given the list. Camera, I mean... Fucking hell. Uh, Novikov is giving the list to Mr. X. Mr. X has some kind of use for that. Sinister of some kind. He knows that Novikov's probably going to die anyway. Because the ICA is like sanctioned a hit out on him. But basically it comes down to Sodas again. Probably being an elusive bastard. <laughs> and not telling what's going on so maybe he just made up the ruse entirely so there's obviously some kind of secret intel that's going on but it's not explained fully you only get like pieces of the puzzle and you're still trying to you know still trying to connect everything together so obviously the next one moving on after the italian mission the world of tomorrow you have assassinate francesca de santa and fucking what's his face pablo i don't remember his name whatever well we'll just go straight into it Ethan security is in the dark about the incident. I fear the company knew about the virus. Not even the board. Must have been someone at the lab. <sighs> I understand. I'll get to the bottom of this. <sighs> Boss is unhappy. I followed you from Italy. I guess when you're invisible, you stop looking over your shoulder. You did that. Iago exposed you. ICA did the heavy lifting. I just pulled some strings. Yeah, you're mine. How do you expect... I play dirty. That's how you defeat a stronger opponent. You strike from behind. Now give me the key. You have a family? Trust me, if there's a weakness, Providence will find it. Take my chances. The key. Fine. Won't do you much good. It's funny. Cobb said the same thing. Thank you, messenger. Don't. I just killed you. And we're even. All right. Uh, she's starting to get a bit skittish right now because I'm trying to remember the shit on the fly and I've not written anything down. Basically, <laughs> what you're catching up with is that that uh, Asian fellow is obviously uh, after the fallout of what's happened in Italy. They were creating some kind of virus. Who knows what it was for? He's trying to clean it up and work out, get into the bottom of it. Arrives at his car. Obviously, Mr. X is already there waiting for him. He then starts speaking about how he worked this out. So, obviously, the list from the Iago auction of the, all the agencies and stuff like that has basically exposed... This operation that was underway in Sapienza. So now you basically learn more the, in a nutshell. Mr. X has some kind of influence on starting to sanction these hits. So once again, it's some kind of revenge, but it's still kind of unclear. And I believe it's unclear throughout the entire season. Until we probably get to season two, we might get a conclusion. Or we probably will get a conclusion. But then you obviously see some kind of transaction of a key... Which will come into place in the next cinematic. And I'll explain that when it arrives. And in a nutshell. 
you're basically learning one. Once again, Mr. X is on a on kind of like a trip of revenge and he's taking out all these different organizations and it's probably in relation to Providence, who is the head of ICA, I believe, who's sodas and whatnot, some kind of like governing body or some shit like that. Two, he definitely has some kind of like influence on sanctioning these hits to take place via Agent 47 doing it, which is still kind of unclear. But he says, you know, I, I just, you know, I argue exposure. ICA did the heavy lifting. I just pulled some strings. So basically implying right there that he had a direct hand in you know, making, well, sanctioning this kind of assassination or, like, this whole kind of operation or whatever. And then, obviously, the key gets transacted. And then that dude dies. And then the Asian fellow is like, oh, you're going to die anyway. I just killed you, so on and so forth, whatever. But then that basically leads us straight onto the next one. But what you've got to understand is that it was the first mention of Providence there. Providence in this, I believe, is some kind of secret organization maybe along the line of the illuminati like corporate kind of espionage per se like freemason shit you know what i'm getting at uh, uh, wink wink something like that so that basically leads straight onto this anyway and we'll explain the key part as well after this going right into it compromised but i I don't understand. There is no sign of forced entry, no alarms, nothing. One of my people has gone missing in Johannesburg. A key bearer. I wish I'd been informed. Still, the system demands two keys, and the rest are all accounted for. Except for your late predecessors. Cobb? But his brain went down over the Pacific. It was an accident. Such was the conclusion at the time. Yes. Die, Mr. Fannin. Happens all the time, even to us. If it seems like a conspiracy, it probably isn't. And yet, a failed coup in Morocco. The ether virus. Someone knows about us. There was a pattern, and I failed to see it. Providence is under attack. was that money <laughs> the money mr fennin information on all of our assets and operatives like you dig a trench director and make it a deep one because none of you are safe anymore Alright then, so, obviously there's the first mention, like, well, obviously there's a connection of the keys, so not the first mention. So you're learning a little bit more about Mr. X. Mr. X is targeting this Providence kind of organization, like secretive corporate organization of some sort like that. And you obviously see a mention of how this dude, oh well, how Mr. Not this dude, Mr. X has got these keys. Like one of the keys went missing in Morocco. One of the keys went missing from a dude in the plane. And then they've obviously gained access to this location somehow. To gain all of this information. Of, of, well, about all of the operatives and, you know, the agents. All kinds of stuff like that. So it's still kind of unclear what Providence is doing. Whether or not it's kind of like an ICA uh, kind of assassina assassination kind of, you know, organization of some sort. Like, it's still pretty unclear. But what you learn 100% is... This is definitely who Mr. X is targeting, Providence. He's attacking them specifically. As to why, it's unclear. Until we get a bit further on into the cinematics, you, you learn a bit more about that, as to why he's attacking it and so on and so forth. But, basically spoiling it a bit ahead of time, you kind of realise that it's probably Providence or some kind of branched out faction of Providence 
that made Hitman and Mr. X or Agent 47 and Mr. X or something like that. And now obviously he's trying to attack them and gain more and more information to build up like a huge kind of offensive attack. Like basically, basically implying there's things bigger to come. You know what I'm saying? Some kind of situation like that. So you obviously see the keys, the keys connect. That's what the keys were used for from the previous cinematic. And Mr. X is attacking them. And now obviously you see some kind of governing head of Providence. Who comes in later on down the line as well. Who's basically... Basically has control of the whole situation. But he's trying to work out the puzzle as well. And he's talking about the Ether Lab and that kind of operation that was going on there. As well as uh, the coup in Morocco and what was going on there with Strandberg and so on and so forth. But it's still a lot of missing pieces of the puzzle. But right, basically the, the biggest thing to derive from that is that Mr. X is directly attacking Providence. And these dudes are pissed about it. And he's got a lo and basically he's got away with it and he's got a load of information. And he knows all about the agents and stuff like that. But what you don't know yet as well is that so does the head of ICA is part of Providence... And he's in control of ICA. So what's what's kind of like... What, what, we'll basically talk about this down the line as well in the cinematic that comes up. But um, what's basically part of it... Well, in fact, no, we won't cover that in the cinematic because that's actually like in-game... Like in-game kind of cutscenes or whatever. But basically, Sodas is part of Providence. And in some way... He's making Agent 47 do the dirty work to try and cut the tracks down. Like, kind of like nip it in the bud. But at every step, Mr. X is always ahead of him. And now he's going to be really ahead of him. Because he's got all this fucking data and information about the agents and the operatives. And, you know, the, you know, the governing heads of, like, different factions and whatnot. So, it basically, it doesn't entirely become clear... Until later on in cutscenes, but what we, what I know now anyway, from watching the later on cutscenes, is that both of these hits were sanctioned by Soders, who is part of Providence, and um, he's making Hitman do it. So he's trying to cover the tracks and nip Mr. X in the bud, which so far has been unsuccessful, basically. Now, you can understand why I kind of wanted to go through this entire, all of these cinematics, because this shit is getting pretty fucking, like, confusing already. So, we're just going to go straight on to the next one, after fucking the Himmafan. I'm trying to, like, I'm trying to piece this all out together in my head, so, like, I can do a conclusion at the end, but... I've not been writing anything down, so this is going to be skittish. Moving on! Next one. Here we go. Cross had billions in hidden offshore accounts, all stripped clean within hours of the kidnapping. Someone wanted the son dead to lure out the father. Someone smart enough to stay in the shadows while we did the wet work, and the Highmores picked up the check. A shadow clan. Mm. Someone got rich. The contract was just. That was a sound problem. I know you don't care about politics, 47. But ICA is neutral, or it has been. We can't allow ourselves to be manipulated. Besides... It's happened before. Italy. Morocco. Paris. All our clients got their intel the same way. Anonymous tips from a hidden source. Each contract perfectly legit. 
Yet part of a grander design. I don't see the pattern. Somebody does. The board has asked us to chase down this shadow client, and our analysts are closing in as we speak. I know that, Tony. Someone's playing a game, 47. The question is, against whom? I'm just gonna start talking now. I basically fucked up this entire thing, like entirely. Like literally I've been fucking up the entire thing because I've been piecing the puzzles together wrong myself. Mr. X has been the dude just giving the anonymous tips to ICA to basically fuck over Providence. So Providence has been getting fucked over by Mr. X giving these anonymous tips. I was saying it was sodas. That was my bad. I was being an idiot because I was thinking like the wrong way. Like I don't even understand the story myself partly, but the penny started to drop. So basically what that cutscene explains, there's a shadow client, Mr. X, who is giving these anonymous tips because he's got all this information about Providence and he's stopping all of these like operations that Providence is a part of. To fuck over Providence for some reason that's undisclosed. Probably because he made him or something like that. So what you realize is the anonymous tip that you got to assassinate Jordan Cross was given by Mr. X. Having said that, it was a lure or a ruse to pull Thomas Cross, Jordan Cross's father, out of hiding so that they allowed the opportunity to take him out as well. And he's obviously related towards Providence in some way, shape, or form. So when I was saying sodas was like sanctioning these hits, I don't even understand it myself, it's that confusing. But this is why I'm doing this. Because we're getting there and now we're finally understanding it. And it's it's just like a minor tweak of a detail. So that's basically what's going on. As far as it's concerned. In terms of the shadow client and so on and so forth. That you're basically figuring out now that it's this Mr. X dude. Who's sanctioning it. So we'll go on to the next one. I made a massive fuck up right there by saying it was sodas because I didn't understand it. But it's this final one that like really fucking plays with you a little bit. Because what you got to realize is Colorado was sanctioned by sodas. This is the only one that was sanctioned by sodas. Rose knew the risks. They all do. You did well, Olivia. I am proud of you. Now listen. The ICA knows about you. They kept you alive because they needed you, and now they don't. We won't talk again. Not until the storm is over. I don't like it. This man you know what he's capable of. You need to end this now. I ran away as a boy. My friend and I, away from that place. We came upon a small farming community. The people were dirt poor, but this woman, she took us in. We were awakened the next morning by the shots. A dozen people lay face down in the snow. Our warden didn't like to lose witnesses. They shot the woman and her family last. They made sure that we watched the whole thing. This is your gift, the warden told us. Your gift and your curse. Touching lives only by ending them. than anyone. Alright then. So. We're learning that the ICA has been tracking kind of like the tech head of Mr. X. And the entire Colorado mission 
was based around some form of freedom fighting militia with plans basically being put in place to make a massive attack against, I believe, like from playing the mission and the whole kind of ram raid of the car and taking down those people and like the abduction of a particular person. Basically, and a briefcase, which probably has more information, I believe. Um, I don't know if it was a person involved, actually. It might have just been a briefcase for more information. But basically, you're realizing that there was some big things to come. But Hitman has been sanctioned for the hit by soldiers, which you learn in the mission, which you don't actually learn in the cutscene, but you learn it at the end of the mission. That obviously... That obviously, Mr. X is trying to, was trying to build a militia to plan an attack against him. But obviously, the ICA has tracked the person who was probably the anonymous leak or something like that, or basically compiling all of the information and more or less trying to, um, you know, develop the entire strategy. So that's how Providence and Mr. Sodas, being head of ICA, knew to attack this location and basically stop this militia kind of uprising against Providence in the first place. So basically, the Shadow Client has been out-shadow cliented, in, in a nutshell. But you don't learn that until, like, the end of the mission and you find out that it was basically Sodas who sanctioned this hit in the first place to stop, stop the constant attacks and, well, basically the biggest attack that was about to happen against Providence by taking out the heads that were working at Colorado. Now, what it doesn't also show you in the cutscene as well is that obviously Mr. X was in that area of Colorado, right? But he was he must have got out of there. Maybe he was in there while Agent 47 was in the area as well. But obviously he got out of there, knew what was going on, and then was explaining to the tech head, I can't remember what it was called or whatever, Explain to the tech head or the African American woman um, that, in a nutshell, were compromised. They knew we were up to something. The ICA has sanctioned a hit on Colorado. It's all over, basically. You need to like get out. You need to hide. Like you're in danger. Blah blah blah. So on and so forth. And then he basically says, "You won't hear from me again until the storm's over." Basically implying that there's a big storm to come, which is I'm assuming is referring to season two. Where shit's going to start heating up and so on and so forth. But then also the biggest thing that you learn as well is that obviously Mr. X is friends with Agent 47. They were engineered together in some way, shape or form. Probably in Romania, I'm, I'm guessing. And then they ran away. And, you know, like they know each other. And that's why, he's, that's why he couldn't kill him then. But if he killed him then, it was kind of like an ultimatum. He could have killed him then and he probably could have stopped it. You know, but he couldn't because he was friends and it's probably like a part of him that still thinks that he'll be able to convince him to turn against the ICA in a sense. You know, or something like that. There's still kind of like some kind of emotions, uh, like a, a sympathy or an empathy, like knowing who he is and what he came from. But it's, it's still kind of unclear as well whether or not 47 knows uh, knows Mr. X at all. Maybe maybe he doesn't remember him. Like, there's still the whole question about that amnesia and so on and so forth. Like it's it's uncertain basically. It's uncertain. So basically things to derive from that is So it is sanctioned the hit to take out the uprising of the militia to stop basically their biggest attack against Providence. Mr. X was there, had the opportunity to take out Agent 47 decided not to because they have some kind of, you know, emotional attachment of being engineered together. Basically implying that Mr. X and Agent 47 are two of the same breed. They're both engineered super hitmen. Whatever, so on and so forth. So that's basically it. And it doesn't really lead on to anything except it leads on to this. Where obviously at the start, of, well, basically after, when this cutscene takes place, it's after you've killed Mr. Soders who was the head of ICA, who just sanctioned the hit on Colorado. But it's unclear why it's happening, I believe. I think this is kind of like an off-the-record thing, uh, which has been, like, illegitimately sanctioned, per se, by Diana. I think her name's Diana. I can't remember, actually. I think it is. I don't remember. Miss, 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 you know, Miss Burnwood or whatever. 
And um, basically, she's now getting revenge upon Sodas, and that's obviously taken place. And Hitman's gone into her Kaido and killed Mr. Sodas, and so on and so forth. And then you see basically the aftermath fallout of that. But basically, Sodas was getting this heart transplant from Yuki for a list of, uh, I believe, more operatives or something like that. But how true that is or how untrue that is is unclear. Maybe that was kind of like a developed kind of ruse per se. But basically, Sodas was willing to sell somebody out. And I believe it was the ICA just to basically stay alive. And then Diana and Hitman shanks sanctioned this off the record kind of illegitimately. Just basically to get revenge for what's been going on in Colorado. But not for what's been going on by Mr. X leaking the information to stop these free missions based on Providence. So these free... Are Providence related, sanctioned by Mr. X and Anonymous Tips. And then Mr. Soda's put his foot down like, I know what you're doing. We've tracked, we've tracked like, yeah, one of your head like tech people. We know you're doing some kind of militia uprising here. Sends in Hitman and Hitman stops it. And Hitman's not getting involved in the politics, which he says in that cutscene as well. But, um, well, cinematic, whatever. But, um, he doesn't give a shit. He just goes in and kills people. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to him. Money's money. Money's money. But um yeah, we'll go straight into this final cutscene. Miss Burnwood. That's not what my ticket says. We received your message. Loud and clear, I might add. Honestly, you could have just sacked the poor guy. I didn't catch your name. No, you didn't. There'll be no retaliation, not for Soders, nor any other recent fiascos. Someone's been meddling in our affairs killing our operatives and making the ICA look like fools. I think you got close to that someone, closer than we've ever been. That's why we're hiring you to take him down. I don't think so. Don't rattle our cages, Miss Burnwood. You really have no idea. You spy on us, bribe our people, and you have the gall to demand our help. No. You can't be trusted. Even so, we've been around for a long, long time. I think we could help each other. Some 20 years ago, your agency took in a young man with no past and extraordinary skills. In his own special way, he cares about you and vice versa. And ever since that time, I never stopped wondering where he came from and who made him what he is. There was a doctor, some depraved experiment, but he's gone now. Well, if you believe the questions died with him, we have nothing further to discuss. If not, as I said, I think we could help each other. Partners, then. Cheer up, Miss Burnwood. We... We are the lesser evil, this terrorist. He wants nothing but chaos. He's only a terrorist if you win. Miss Burnwood, we won a long time ago. This, <laughs> this is maintenance.
Alright then, roll credits. Um. Oh, there's no roll of credits. Whatever. I thought I might roll the credits there and I just talk over them. But whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, okay, basically. So, final cinematic. A lot of the things that I just explained. Obviously, it kind of makes the... Well, the implication that... Uh, Diana sanctioned Hitman to take out Sodas out of revenge. Because they're meant to be neutral and, you know, so on and so forth about... Uh, how she felt like she's been cheated and she wanted revenge on Sodas for doing what he did for sanctioning that hit in Colorado and so on and so forth. But at the same time, you also learn that they had got close to killing Mr. X, Agent 47, and Diana did. Kind of... Kind of kept separate from what ICA knew, as well as Mr. Sodas and so on, so on and so forth. Um, but basically, it's the start of like a partnership, which is, you know, referred to throughout that entire cinematic. The start of a partnership between the two, being Providence and, um, well, maybe not the ICA as a whole, but more between. Diana and Agent 47. So you learn that's there. So then you learn that, like, obviously Mr. X to Providence is being perceived as a terrorist. And it's still unclear why he's targeting Providence. But then it starts to become a bit more clear that obviously Providence knows something about how 47 was created. And it's not essentially... It's not blackmail, essentially. But it's basically... It kind of is blackmail, but it's hard to say it's blackmail because you're not really getting something out of it other than information about where 47 comes from, about, like, purely curiosity. But, um, you know, it's, it's still kind of unclear how much they know and how much they do know or something like that. But you obviously get the uh, the feeling as well as what you said, that we've been around for a long time and this is just maintenance and so on and so forth. That obviously they've been established for a long time so they would know about where Hitman came from, hence the picture and whatnot. But uh, in a nutshell, striking up a partnership is probably going to come more to fruition in Season 2. Um, you know that Providence doesn't really care about what happened to Sodas. You kind of learn that Diana sanctioned Hitman to do it, kind of off the record, on their own accord, just to basically be spiteful and get revenge in a sense. Just because Diana felt cheated for uh, not knowing about the, the shadow client on these missions. And having Mr. X basically uh, tip anonymously. And then so does covering it up. Because there was a big paycheck coming from somebody else. And it was a shadow client kind of assassinations for these three. And then being pissed off that she learned that so does a sanction to hit in Colorado. That, uh, you know, that obviously took place to stop the militia uprising that Mr. X was building for a big attack against Providence. But then, obviously, once again, there's, like, he's not bothered about that. He's not, he's no repercussions for that. He just wants a partnership now to join up with Diana, in turn, the handler of Agent 47, to basically take down Mr. X together and be done with it because they see him as a terrorist and... Yeah, it's, it's still it's still kind of unclear what Mr. X's intentions are, other than just disrupting the entire Providence um, organization per se. You still don't know the reasoning behind it as well. So, you know, there's still a lot of like missing pieces of the puzzle, but that will obviously be answered in season two. But overall, that's kind of a wrap. So, quickly reclapping on a super brief note. Hitman gets inducted, or Agent 47 gets inducted into the ICA. They don't really know where he's come from. His backstory doesn't really check out. Uh, he could be dangerous, and Sodas is worried about that, per se. There's some kind of doubt there. But regardless, he gets inducted in and then gets sanctioned to do hits. He's like official kind of part of the ICA, like operative team or something like that. Then obviously he goes to Paris, 
Novikov gives the information about, I'm assuming, Providence, ICA, MI5, all kinds of secret intelligence organizations, uh, organizations in a trade for killing Kamarov, which was, which was basically some kind of secret in Russian intelligence agency head or something like that that had it out for Novikov. So Novikov thought he was getting a good deal, but then in turn, he got like, well, he basically got a sanctioned hit taken out on him by Mr. X anonymously. But he didn't know about it. And once again, it was done through a shadow client. So he didn't know it was him. So basically, he's tying up the loose ends by killing him. But he's gained the information like, like you know, throwing throwing like a pebble into, a, into like a pond and the ripple effect. You know what I'm saying? It starts to ripple out. So that's the first ripple. Then in the second one, you learn that he had to take out Mr. X sanctioned, once again, a shadow client, a hit on, in Sapienza against Francesca and whatever the other face is. Pablo, I can't remember his name. Fuck it. Doesn't matter. But obviously that drew the, uh, the Asian fellow out of hiding. In turn, Mr. X then met him, stole the key, which was once again like adding another ripple on there, took the key, and then that goes on to where... You learn that, obviously, there was another key, and he's gotten that from some form of accident. It's unclear how that happened. It's, you know, that's, it doesn't matter. It's whatever. It's irrelevant, per se. But, you know, there's two keys. You know that the data has been stolen from this secure location. That he has both keys. Once again, by Mr. X, adding on, like, another ripple effect that they're gaining momentum. It's growing. They're using this for some kind of... Some kind of pre-planned attack against Providence. And you learn that there's more going on in terms of Providence there. And then obviously on this one you learn that obviously you've been sanctioned to take out Jordan Cross again. And you learn that there's some kind of shadow client going on. That it wasn't a coincidence that his father died at the same time. That you killing Jordan Cross was a lure to pull Thomas Cross like out of hiding or out of like his safe zone. To then be assassinated, who's Thomas, Thomas Cross is obviously related to Providence in some ways, probably some kind of authoritative figure within the organization of some regard. And once again, it's a shadow client by Mr. X, but now this time, Diana and Hitman work it out. Now in Colorado, you learn that Sodas has tracked Mr. X's tech person who's left a trace, and he's now sanctioned a hit. To take out this uprising militia private force who's out to get Providence, who's being led by Mr. X, which gets cut down because Soda sanctioned it. And you don't really learn this yet, but you'll learn it uh, in, well, you don't learn it in the cinematic, but you learn it at the end of the mission that Diana also finds out, as well as Agent 47, that it was Soda's. That the pers that is the person that was tracking, so there's definitely a connection there. A reason why Sodas wanted this hit to take place in Colorado and stop this whole uprising of this militia force that's going after Providence, so on and so forth. And then, obviously, Hokkaido takes place.